John chapter number 11. I'm just going to read two verses. We can read in verse 43. The Bible says, And when he, had, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the marvelous grace of God, the grand privilege to be able to come to the house of God and assemble with the saints of God, as Brother Donald uh, uh, said a moment ago in his testimony, God, how you brought us from all walks of life and all situations to come together. God, we're thankful for the body of Christ. God, we're thankful that we who once were without have been made nigh through the blood of Jesus. God, we're thankful we've been accepted in the Beloved. God, we're thankful we're an heir, joint heir to the throne of Christ. Uh, God, we're thankful, Lord, that um, through the adoption of sonship we can cry, Abba, Father, unto Thee. God, we can request of Thee and seek Thee. God, knowing that we have that special relationship with Thee. Fathers, we come to You tonight. We're thankful for the good singing, the good testimonies, the good prayer time, good fellowship time. God, it's been good for us to be here. Uh, Lord, we've come to preaching time. God, we cannot do this without Thee. God, we ask for Your presence and Your power. We ask, Lord, that You'd speak to hearts. Uh, God, I pray for Miss Noreen's dear mother. You know what's going on there. And God, we do pray pray for your will and for wisdom for the family. God, I pray you'd touch that dear lady. God, I pray your will be done. Father, we do pray now that, Lord, uh, you'd speak to hearts. There's no telling what adversity folks have faced. Uh, No telling, Lord, uh, 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 what's going on in folks' hearts and lives. Uh, God, you know all things. You know our down-sitting, our uprising. God, you know what we faced yesterday. You know what we faced today. God, you even know what we're faced tomorrow. Uh, God, I pray for your help. I pray for your touch. Uh, And I pray that, Lord, uh, you'd permeate this place and, God, uh, you'd fill each heart and life with yourself. Uh, God, I pray we leave out victorious. uh, strengthened, uh, encouraged. Uh, God, we leave out glorifying you and praising you for what great things you've done. Uh, now use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help your people. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, this is a very familiar uh, story, uh, uh, a great uh, 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 account in Scripture uh, in the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Uh, We're not going to revisit a lot of that. Uh, 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 That's not the thought I'm looking for tonight. Uh, But I do want you to notice a couple things from these two verses. Uh, The first things I want you to notice is the directive. Uh, We find in verse 43 it says, uh, When he uh, thus had spoken, uh, and he cried with a loud voice, uh, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, I'm glad when Jesus speaks, uh, things happen. Uh, I'm glad when he speaks, uh, situations change. uh, And he gave a directive. uh, He gave an order. uh, He didn't say, Lazarus, if you feel like it, uh, because he couldn't feel anything, he was dead. Uh, He didn't say, Lazarus, uh, uh, if you're not too busy. He wasn't busy doing anything. He was dead. Uh, 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 He didn't say, Lazarus, uh, if you don't have anything better to do. He didn't have anything better to do. He was dead. Uh, He gave an order. Uh, He said, Lazarus, uh, come forth. We see the directive. Uh, Now notice the one that's dead, Lazarus. Uh, Look at verse 44. It says, And he that was dead came forth. Didn't say he that was asleep. You know, there's a lot of Jews trying to say, well, it wasn't no big deal, he's asleep. That's why Jesus waited four days before he went. So there could be no mistake that he was dead. Matter of fact, when he showed up, uh, 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 his, uh, Martha said, Lord, he stinketh by now, he's been dead four days. Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, there was no doubt uh, that Lazarus was dead. Uh, 
Uh, uh, speaking of Martha, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 Jesus to her, first of all, he was distant. Uh, he was far away. Uh, 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 then uh, he was delayed. He didn't show up on time. Uh, and then she felt that he was delinquent because uh, uh, she let her brother die. Uh, but we know why he let him die. Uh, so that God could be glorified. Uh, uh, so that God could get uh, all the honor and praise. Uh, uh, so that uh, uh, those that were there and then those that would read this for the next 2,000 years uh, would know that there was a man named D Lazarus, uh, a man that Jesus loved, uh, a man that Jesus wept over uh, when he saw others weeping over Lazarus, uh, and Jesus uh, gave forth a directive for Lazarus to come forth, and he did. Hmm? He was dead. And I want you to notice this. We see the deliverance. It says, he came forth bound hand and foot, with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Can I say something? Not everybody, when they get delivered by Jesus, is set free. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good. Mm, oh, we're no longer bound by sin. But we might have some bondage in our life might have some things in our life uh, that we just can't lay down. But I'm glad when Jesus saves, uh, he delivers. Huh? Aren't you glad? Uh, he, uh, Lazarus came forth, he's bound hand and foot, uh, got a napkin about his face, he can't see, uh, he can't move, uh, he can't do well. How did he come forth if he couldn't move? He came forth under the power of God. Uh, uh, you know how you got born again? Through the power of God. Uh, it wasn't by works you done, uh, wasn't by your abilities, wasn't by your intellect, uh, it was by the power of God. Uh, and you know what delivered us after we got saved from some things in this world? The power of God. Thank God he's able to deliver. Now look with me over in chapter 12. Flip over chapter 12. We see the directive. We see the dead one. We see the deliverance. deliverance. In chapter 12, look at verse 1. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was which had been dead whom he raised from the dead there they made him a supper and Martha served but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them now we've seen the directive we've seen the dead we see the deliverance now we see one dining uh, Jesus comes to the supper that they, honor, they, they threw in his honor because he raised Lazarus and there's Lazarus dining with Jesus. Hmm? That's my thought. That's what I want to preach on. This net, I was going somewhere the other day and she had her phone on. It was just playing some songs and there was a song come on. It mentioned something uh, along this line and I couldn't get it off my mind. I want to preach on this thought. I want to preach on from the tomb to the table. From the tomb to the table. Now, I want to tell you something. Uh, whether we think this is morbid or not, Lazarus was in the tomb. And the reason Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth, is because in those days, there wasn't one grave per body. Uh, there was a tomb that held many bodies. Uh, and if Jesus would have said, come forth, every dead body would have came out of there. Uh, but Jesus was interested in Lazarus. Uh, and Lazarus comes forth out of the tomb. And we find uh, just a few days later, he's at the table uh, uh, dining with Jesus. Uh, hey, what a blessing uh, to be uh, at a table with Jesus. Uh, and I got to thinking about from a tomb uh, to the table. Uh, can I say, first of all, there's the table uh, of salvation. Uh, we find here in verse number 2, chapter 12, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, there they made him a supper. Who? La Jesus. Uh, uh, and it says, Martha, sir, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Uh, we find in verse 1, uh, he'd been dead, uh, been raised from the dead, uh, and now he's dining at the table. Uh, can I say, the Bible said in 
Colossians 2.13 and you uh, being dead in your sins uh, and the uncircumcision of your flesh uh, hath he quickened or made alive together with him uh, having forgiven you all trespasses. Uh, uh, listen, we were dead uh, to God. We were uh, dead to the things of God. Uh, we were in a tomb, uh, the tomb of this dead flesh uh, that was going to take us to hell. Uh, but Jesus came by uh, and Jesus called us out uh, and Jesus delivered us uh, and we got to eat at the table of salvation. Uh, I'm glad I'm saved. Uh, I'm glad I get to feast with Jesus. Uh, I'm glad, hallelujah, somebody said uh, about getting in the Bible. Uh, Caleb underscoring the Bible and highlighting the Bible. Uh, hey, when you get saved, uh, you get to sit at the table of Jesus uh, and feast from his word. Uh, and his word means something to you. Uh, thank God for the table of salvation. I got to think about some other tables. And I say there's the table of the sanctuary. The Bible says in Ezekiel 44, verse 16, And they shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. Aren't you glad, hallelujah, there's a table in the sanctuary? And I'm not talking about this table where we take the Lord's Supper. I'm talking about a table where we can scoot up underneath and we can get some fresh manna from heaven and help our souls. Uh, yes, you've had a bad week. Uh, yes, you're facing a valley. Uh, yes, you've had some heartache. Uh, but if you just get to the sanctuary, uh, even when you got a headache, Brother Tommy, uh, you can feast from God's table. Uh, thank God for the table in the sanctuary. Listen, for years I've known people say, Boy, I really like how you all worship. But I just can't leave my church. And their church is dead and dry. I, I, for years, as a matter of fact, I ain't going to embarrass her, but I am. I remember when Miss Cinda, every now and then, would sneak over here and say, I just need some preaching. You remember those days? Huh? She said, I just need some preaching. I don't know where she came from, but she'd say on her own words, I just need some preaching. Huh? Aren't you glad there's a table some places where you can get fed? Uh, hey, Brother Tony, when he came, uh, I, I said the preacher just preached salvation over and over and over. And they just had a handful of folks and everybody was saved. Uh, but Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it's all salvation. And he'll tell you, he said, we were starving to death. Uh, we needed fed. Uh, I don't understand uh, going somewhere where you're not getting fed uh, when God's got a table spread uh, and there's room. Hey, what a blessing we come get fed. Uh, oh, aren't you glad God just meets with us and feeds us from the scriptures around here? Huh? I got a neighbor who goes to one of them feel good churches. And I'll never forget. I used to hear he stopped me and he, he was so excited they had a little revival campaign and he brought in evangelists and said, He actually opens the Bible and he reads from the Bible. And he tells us what the Bible says. He said, you all do something like that? I said, every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. I said, that's all we know is what the Bible says. Huh? Oh, why would you go anywhere when you're not being fed? Thank God for a table in the sanctuary. The table of salvation. But then there's the table of sympathy. It's a table of grace. A table of mercy. Huh? You find it in 2 Samuel chapter 9. Verse 11. Then said Ziba unto the king, According to all that my lord the king commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do. As for Mephibosheth, said the king, he shall eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Uh, oh, Mephibosheth was crippled by a fall. Uh, under law, he should have been put to death because uh, he was related to the former king. Uh, and when a new king come uh, into uh, power, he destroyed the other king's family uh, so there could be no allegiance to the former king. Uh, but old King David, uh, a picture of our heavenly David, the Lord Jesus, uh, he said, are there any of the sons of Saul uh, still around? Uh, they said, way down in Lodabar, uh, there's a crippled boy named Mephibosheth. Uh, 
Oh, he said, go fetch him. Uh, hey, and they sent the king's chariot uh, down to Lodabar, uh, which was a dry place, uh, which there was no help down in that place. Uh, and old Mephibosheth saw the king's chariot roll up. Uh, he said, this is it. Uh, this is the day they've come for me. Uh, this is the day that my life will end. Uh, he didn't know he just started living that day. Uh, hey, uh, they said, the king has business with you. Uh, and they brought him to David. Uh, and he fell down to worship David. Uh, David said, Mephibosheth, uh, because of Jonathan, uh, uh, your father, uh, I'm going to show you mercy. Uh, I'm going to show you grace. Uh, and Mephibosheth uh, got to eat at the king's table. Uh, and when he sat up under the table, uh, you didn't see his crippled legs anymore. Uh, he was one of the king's sons. Uh, aren't you glad under the table of mercy? Uh, hey, when we pull up under the Lord's table, uh, they don't see our faults. Uh, they don't see our failures. Uh, we're just one of the king's sons. Uh, hallelujah for that table sympathy. Uh, I don't know you, but I'm glad he had mercy and pity on me. Thank God for the sympathy of God. Uh, I thought about the table of supply. You know them hard-headed Jews in the wilderness, they didn't believe God was able. The psalmist said in Psalm 78, nine, uh, 78 verse 19, Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? <laughs> I'm glad God sent manna. I'm glad God sent quail in. I'm glad God would open a rock and send forth a river. I'm going to tell you, there was estimated there were six million Jews in that company, and God fed them every morning. God fed them every evening. God provided water for them and their livestock. For 40 years, their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. I'd say he can furnish a table in the wilderness. God can supply all our needs through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hey, David said he never seen a righteous forsaking uh, nor seed begging bread. Uh, our God is able, uh, well able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. Uh, he is a God of supply. Uh, and his story's been never run short. Can I say this? Uh, I thank God for the table of safety. Mm. I love when Brother James gets right with God and sings that. 23rd Psalm uh, last year you heard that message I preached out of that that 5th verse thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies uh, there's a table of safety and all the enemy can do is watch us eat uh, he gave me that message of you the enemy he just sees me at the table of safety just enjoying the goodness of God. Oh, he puts a bullseye on me. He rears back his bow and lets one go. And it misses me every time. Huh? Amen. Why? Because, oh, our God has a table of safety. It's called the center of the will of God. The safest place you can ever be is where God wants you. When you're in the will of God, a rope won't hold you. Powder won't burn. Are you listening? Uh, 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 flames won't burn. Nothing will affect you when you're in the center of the will of God. Uh, there's a table of safety then I thought about this there's the table of submission table of humility you find that Matthew 15 that wonderful story of the Syrophoenician lady whose, woman, or whose daughter's uh, 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 dying and you know she had no right to the Lord the Lord's disciples were so compassionate I think they were independent Baptists they said Lord she's bothering us send her away he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And then we're talking about the table of submission, humility. Verse 27, And she said, Truth, Lord. Yeah, I'm nothing more than an old Gentile dog. But she went on to say this, Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's tables. She said, I don't need bread, just give me some crumbs. Uh, you know what the Lord said? The Lord said he hadn't seen that much faith all in all of Israel. What that Syrophoenician, she got home, her daughter was well. Huh? Why? Because God is nigh them of a broken heart and save us such of a contrite spirit. God resisted the proud but give grace to the humble. There's the table 
of humility, the table of submission. I'm thankful I made it from the tomb to the table. There's also the table of scorn. You find that in Matthew 21, verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. We said earlier, not everybody comes to church, comes to worship. And can I say it's no accident, sometimes some people have to go on down the road because they didn't come to worship. And you know the story, Jesus came in and there were those making merchandise of the Lord in the Lord's house. He made a three-quartered whip and drove them out. Now can I say there wasn't just one little spineless guy there. There was a bunch of people there that were money changers in the temple. I said all that, say this, Jesus wasn't a little sissy. Jesus wasn't a wimp. Jesus was God. And he had about all that he was going to take without opening up some hellfire and brimstone on them. And he drove them out. Uh, you got to understand, what were they doing in there, preacher? Well, see, underneath the law, you were to bring a turtle dove or you was to bring a, a lamb or a bullock. You was to bring a sacrifice to the house of God. And God's people had gotten so lax that they didn't bring one. They wouldn't raise the turtle doves. They wouldn't raise the lambs. They wouldn't raise the animals. They were lazy. They'd come to the house of God, and there were people inside the uh, uh, vestibule there that was seldom what they needed to take to the priest. They'd sell them a turtle dove. They'd sell them a lamb or goat or bullock. Whatever they needed, they'd sell it. And they was making merchandise of God's house. And we say, boy, that's heinous. Well, I wonder how many people don't read their Bible. They don't pray. They'll come to church and they expect the man of God to have the message. They'll expect the people of God to pray. They'll expect somebody else to have uh, uh, what they need, but they themselves don't come prepared and give the Lord what He requires. Hmm? There's the tables of scorn. And I thought about this. There's the table of service. You do know that God saved you to serve Him. I mean, if God just wanted to save you to take you to heaven, after you got saved, He'd take you to heaven. But God chose to use you and I to be a light to the world that others could see what God can do in an individual who gives their heart to Jesus. And God saved us to be a servant to Him. His only requirement is that we would love Him and serve Him. He would forgive us and cleanse us from all our sin and go to prepare a place for us in glory. Give us all of heaven. All he requires is that, Brother Brian, we love him and serve him. Hmm. Not a bad deal. Took all my sin, took my hell, gave me forgiveness, became a friend that stick us closer than a brother, gave me a peace that passes all understanding, and then gives me all of heaven when I get home. Huh? Not a bad deal. All I got to do is love him and serve him. Huh? Not a bad deal. God saved us to serve him. But somewhere along the line, people got their minds jacked up when it comes to service. They got their minds all messed up that, well, the only one supposed to serve is the pastor. That's what we pay him to do is to serve. Or the deacons or the treasurer. People that have an office, they're the servants. Now, if you've been born again, you're a servant. Now, you're either going to be a servant of honor, a vessel of honor, or you're going to be a servant of dishonor. Servants of dishonor, if you go back and read the Gospels when Jesus talks about them talents and stuff, those that didn't do anything with what Jesus gave them, it wasn't good when Jesus came back and talked to them. Hmm? I want to be a servant of honor. But there is a table of service. The Bible says in Acts chapter 6, now let me just quantify this. 
By the time Acts chapter 6 comes, we know that there were 3,000 saved at Pentecost. We know shortly after that another 5,000 saved. So the church could easily have been 10, 15,000 people by the time we get to Acts chapter 6. Now think about it. Here's 120 in the upper room. The Holy Ghost falls. Peter gets up and preached. All of a sudden there's 3,120. And then the Lord adds daily such as should be saved. And then another chapter or so over another 5,000 gets saved at one time. I mean, the church has grown leaps and bounds. I imagine they're looking for some Sunday school space. Trying to figure out who's going to teach this one, who's going to teach... Are you listening? I mean, put, put your mind to this thing. See, you read the Bible, see 3,000, 5,000. Can you imagine we're sitting here all of a sudden, this crowd here, and then next week we got, we got 3,000? Then two weeks after we got another 5,000? We'd be scrambling trying to figure out what we're going to do with all these folks, Right? there's a lot of pressure how's everybody's spiritual needs going to get met because when you get that many people you not only have to preach to them and feed them spiritually all of a sudden you got folks that need prayer for their back you got folks whose mamas and mother-in-laws are in the hospital you got folks that are concerned about lost loved ones. You got folks whose uh, uh, mother needs great prayer, and all of a sudden, all, we we heard all the prayer requests we had here tonight. What if we had fifteen thousand people? Well, somewhere along the line, somebody needs to start doing some serving. On well, Acts chapter six, we come to that very same problem. The Bible says in verse two, then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. The men of God, it was all they could do to spend time with God to get the message from God. You've got to keep in mind, they didn't have a Bible. All they had is what the Lord had taught them for three years and what the Holy Ghost started doing in their hearts just a few days earlier. And they said, We've got to be given to prayer and the word of God so we know what to get up and preach and know how to follow God and how to lead this crowd. He said, it's not meat for us to serve tables. In other words, when folks are in the hospital, folks are sick, there are widows, there, there are, are folks that got problems. He said, we can't do all of this and get the mind of God. He goes on to say this, verse 3. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word can I say there's the table of service they anointed seven men as deacons and those men appointed folks to go out and help folks that had these specific needs and those men took care of the table of the Lord so the men of God could be given to prayer and the word and so it's very important to understand there are the tables of service. I've said for years, I'm for everything that the Lord wants to do around here. I just can't do it all. Amen. Miss Ned, tell you, I'm losing my mind. I'm getting old. Huh? I don't even. Hey, I, I, they say confession's good for the soul. Can I confess something right here? I announced for two weeks we're having baptismal Sunday night. Announced it Sunday morning. Huh? Now, I was out of town in Florida to come back, spent Friday out here with Ray and everything. So all, she said, did you fill up the baptistry? I said, no. So we come out late Saturday night, 10 o'clock, fill up the baptistry. Now it's Sunday morning, we're having baptism. The kids told me we were getting baptized, preaching and everything. I knew I had to go pick up Brother Sammy, you know, at the hotel and everything. I get here Sunday night for prayer, and I realize I don't have any clothes to change into after <laughs> baptism. So I'm going home in wet clothes. Thank God, my oldest, I'm still Taos. So, Jordan, you left. He said, I'm fixing to right now. Go get me some clothes, boy. Uh, he said, and that said, are you losing it or what? Yes. I'm getting old. A lot of stuff I can't focus on all of it anymore. I, I'm, I gotta, if I don't make myself notes and then make myself note where I put the note, we're in trouble. <laughs> I'm just trying to say I can't do it all 
That's why we have folks who will drive the bus. That's why we have Sunday school teachers. That's why we have folks working with the kids. That's why we have folks that, that uh, 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 arrange visitation and where, where we're going to go. And that's why we do all this stuff. Because if not, it wouldn't get done. But I've got good news. There's still plenty of room for others to serve. Amen. You see, God saved us to serve. There's a table of service. The happiest you'll ever be is the busiest you are for Jesus. Sure. Hmm? Then I thought about this. Hallelujah. One day, there's going to be a table at the supper. Sure. Revelation 19.9 And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. I say this all the time. I'm glad we're going to the supper. I'm glad we're going to a feast and not a fast. Aren't you? Uh, aren't you glad? Aren't you glad we're not like that? Uh, 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 those monks and those, those people don't eat for days. You know, Gandhi and all them people and everything. This is how you get spiritual. Aren't you glad we're going to heaven? We're putting on a feed bag. You know, we're not going to sit up there in a, in a tunic going hum. Um, um, where's the poppy flowers we can go sell at the airport? Aren't you glad we're not part of that crowd? Amen. Aren't you glad we're going to the marriage supper? Amen. We're going to sit down at the table. Amen. And I don't understand this, Brother Brian, but Jesus himself is going to serve us. Well, we're not worthy no. to even be there, but he's going to serve us. Amen. Boy, aren't you glad we're going? <laughs> what a time that's going to be. <laughs> And I don't know what all is going to be. I, I, I really think whatever it is, it's going to be wonderful. Sure. Wouldn't it be a blessing when your plate comes, it's all your favorite food? Amen. Wouldn't that be a blessing? And then your plate comes, it's all your favorite food. And your plate comes, all your favorite food. huh? Uh, wouldn't it be wonderful? Hey, we just ate something the other night. Butter pie. Lord have mercy, it's going to be in heaven. Mm. Huh? It's going to be in heaven. And it's going to be in heaven. It's going to be in heaven. Say, what is it? Heavenly. <laughs> you know, I was at a restaurant, bring the dessert menu. I've already eaten a, a half a cow. I'm not ready really for dessert. And this guy says, butter pie. I'm thinking, I'm picturing two sticks <laughs> and a crust. And nothing sounds good. Butter pie. I mean, I'm full, Brother Jack. I don't want to eat, and I don't want to eat no sticks of butter. You know what I'm saying? I said, butter pie. I thought, all right. He brought it. Oh, my stars, Brother Jack. You need to go. Yeah, I know. You need. I, don't, I mean, it just melted in your mouth. And I don't know if it had any butter in there or not, but whatever it had, it was good, and it's going to be in heaven. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, just trying to tell you, friend. We're going to the table of all tables if you're saved by the good grace of God. I'm glad that he got me out of the tomb and he saved me and I started at that table and he has let me go from table to table to table to one day I'm going to be at his table yep. just like Lazarus sitting there next to the Lord we're going to be seated next to the Lord feasting with him and dining with him let me ask you a question you going if not you can go Aiden you glad you got saved yeah, I know you are. Huh? Yeah. Aiden, maybe you could sit next to me and the Lord at the table. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Huh? If you're not saved, you can get saved. You don't have to stay in a tomb. Who wants to stay in a tomb? When you can be at the table with the Lord. If you've been saved, you ought to thank God for the tables He's put in your life. And whatever he table He sits you at, friend, feast from it, because it leads to another table. And friend, wherever Jesus puts you, it's wonderful. Just stay with the trip, and one of these days we'll be at his table, and we'll say, thank God, thank God, it was worth it all. It was worth every mile, worth every trial, every valley, every climbing up every mountain, every problem, every pressure. It was worth it all, because look where I am now, sure. at the table of the Lord. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get a song of invitation. If you're not saved, won't you come tonight and get saved? Be a good night for you to get saved. If you are saved, maybe the Lord spoke to your heart. Maybe you need to ask the Lord, Lord, how can I dine from that table of service? I sure don't want to be at the table of scorn. Maybe tonight.
he spoke to you about something specific, why don't you come and ask God for his perfect will to be manifest in your heart. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for delivering us from the tomb. God, I'm glad I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for those tables you've set before me. Now bless these thy people. Speak to hearts. God, save that one nearest hell. Maybe one of these young people need to get saved tonight. Maybe an adult needs to get saved tonight. Lord, just like you called Lazarus out, I pray you'd call them out. Help them to know you're speaking to their heart. They'll come and give their heart to Jesus. Have your way in this invitation. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.